episode is brought to you ad-free thanks to all of our wonderful patrons. You can get tons of exclusive content and help us keep the show going by joining at patreon.com slash shonenflop. And welcome to this episode of Shonen Flop, where we talk about manga and shonen jump that didn't make it big. I'm David. I'm Jordan. Next week, we are not covering a manga, because Jordan, what are we releasing next week? The Floppy! Yes! We are doing our third annual Best of Awards, where you're going to see things like Best Series, Best Worst Series, Worst Series, and Hardest Title to Pronounce. So very esteemed awards. It's honestly more prestigious than the Oscars, I think. <laughs> we're not bribed by the community. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about that. I'm David. I'm Jordan. Oh, sorry. Oh, fuck. Um... And I'm Gigi, oh, wait, sorry. I guess. <laughs> yes, 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 sorry. Um, oh, God. Yes, sorry. No, oh. <laughs> we're fucking up already! Yeah! Just like this offer, because... Did you want to tell them, tell, uh, Jordan already filled in, what are we covering this episode? We're covering Icehead Gill. Yes! Yeah! And the fucking gillionaire dollar bill. G- Gillillion... G- fuck it, I don't know. That's fucking... A more billion. A more billion? Gil Illion's Island. Anyway. Right, anyway, anyway, <laughs> ZZ, please tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Digi. I like to hang around in your guys' Discord community, which is awesome. And you can find me at Interstitial Heart to Mind Layer, an actual play podcast, and the Dean Wee podcast on Spotify. That's awesome. And thank you so much for being a long standing community member. I love how when we made your, we did for Patreon, what would everyone hear Kojima's name be? What was your original name? Uh, Sleep Goodman. Yeah. Oh, sorry. ZZ Digital is your proper. And then for a while, you were Sleep Goodman, the sleepy <laughs> AI. Yeah. I thought a lot more people would be changing their Discord names to that, to be honest. Ah, uh, it's okay. Sleep Goodman is so good. <laughs> yeah, Sleep Goodman. That's me every night. You guys, like, have repeatedly hit me with, like, sleep-related stuff. Well, it's just the ZZ. So what else can you think of, right? I guess. Top? Bottom? Actually, that sounds like a good name for a fucking ZZ glam bottom. band. ZZ Bottom would be a great name for a glam rock band. <laughs> oh, it's like the B69s. Yeah. So I created a, a stand, an OC stand from JoJo, you know? And I was like, I'm just going to name it whatever the first thing I get when I turn on the radio to the rock station, and I got ZZ Top's Sharp Dressed Man. I love it. <laughs> It makes your clothes cl- try and press every any time. It lets you change the material of things, actually. What it does is it makes your clothes sharp, like literally blades. Yes. Like, I could not ask for a better song artist combo. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. And I could not ask for a better guest. But why don't we dive into actually talking about this manga? Jordan, take it away. Tell us about it. It was written by Iko Hachia. Uh, notable people they were in assistant for was Gin Osaka on uh, Doron Dororon. Hey, that's an episode. We've covered him twice. Yeah, we covered him twice. Wasn't that the uh, fucking... Golem Hearts. Golem Hearts guy. So he's an OG. Oh, yeah. Guys, other works, though, uh, I mean, Iko Hachia's other works are Serio no Magoi, which was a one shot in Shonen Jump Plus back in 2022, the old year 2022, about a powerful student who uses his strength for profit and has his life change when he meets a kind girl, sort of a, uh, a manic pixie dream girl, it sounds, if I would describe her. Zoe Deschanel presents. <laughs> Zoe Deschanel. Yes, we're not talking about that. Icehead Gill ran between June 26th, 2023 to November 13th, 2023. We got a recent cancel. Uh, it replaced Mashal, David. That which we actually did a recommendation episode on. Back when we still did those. I also got to say absolute king shit to offer. It was like, all right, I don't feel like making this manga anymore and just ended it after like 150 chapters instead of going on for like six years. Respect. I, I really wish more mangaka did that. It was good. Very few people can be One Piece. God, yeah. And this, the series that replaced it was Shadow Eliminators, which just... just you want to talk about 90s sounding fucking manga? That sounds like a fake manga created for a TV show. I feel like I played that on the PS1. Yes. It was written by Kento Amamiya, and the series that started at the same time as it was Martial Master Asami by Kawada. One volume, it's still going, but this series ran for 20 chapters, had two volumes, and fuck that, let's get into the goddamn plot, because fucking who cares? Yeah. All right, so now that we've heard about the series, let's actually hear about what happens in the plot summary. 
After his father Drecky killed the prince, along with his seven warrior students, Gil was chased out of his home in the capital, only to wash up on an island run by a dummy mommy named Mela, who won't matter from this point on. That's definitely part of the drinking game that the manga we cover has a dummy mommy. It, it <laughs> seems to be. Anyway, in a book belonging to Drecky, Gil reads about evil liches from hell who kill people and possess their bodies. Yeah, they're basically just deadites. Oh shit, yeah. There are four relics which can close the gates of hell, and hidden within the book is one of them, a cool necklace. Conveniently, a lich shows up immediately after he reads about them, <laughs> and like, it's a second he finishes reading about them, and possesses a villager, but Gil uses his father's axe, King's axe, to kill him. Gil then sets out to find his dad and get the relics. He makes it to a town where he meets Sana, not Santa, a girl from the Rani tribe who have been been punished by the king to live alone and in misery. Was it a girl? I could never tell the, that person's gender. Like, they pulled the, oh my gosh, it's a girl, really early on, but like, it didn't matter at all for any point. Yeah. I just completely missed that then. I Because I was like, I could not tell that person's gender reading the entire series. Yeah, she was a girl. Okay. But she had escaped that and just kind of steals things. She turned into a little thief because she's like, yeah, I can do whatever I want now that I'm not with them. But after Gil defeats a guy who's mad at her for stealing things, his brother, a guy with boomerangs who was blinded by Gil's dad, shows up to fight them. In the middle of the fight, he's taken over by a lich. But Sana reveals that she has a relic, a bow that shoots wind arrows, and is able to help Gil fight him, Popcorn David. Oh, man. Just then, a guy named Greatest Frey appears. His name is literally Greatest. It took me a second to realize what his fucking name was. Yeah, it was so confusing. <laughs> yeah, and he slices the lich apart with his sword. As it is defeated, the lich tells Gil that his father is currently being held by the leader of the liches, the true king, and is in the process of being possessed. Greatest then takes them to meet his assistant, who is literally named Sliz. Sliz. Do you know what Sliz is? No. It is disgusting slang for vagina. <laughs> I had a feeling. I really don't think the author was going for that, but it was like, really? <laughs> you named her Sliz? Come on. Final Fantasy V has a character named Butts. Yeah. <laughs> and reveals that he's one of the king's generals. They were ordered to kill Gil and Santa, but instead take him back to meet King Ond. A bunch of shit happens, and we learn through flashback that Drecky was the king's younger brother who was cooler than him, and huh, I wonder why it was called the king's axe at the start. Right, because I was wondering that, like, wow, the king gave him an axe, and you're like, no, he just, he should have been king, was the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, and then some stupid bullshit happens, and the king tells Gil to go to the troll force and kill all the liches there, because coincidentally, the liches were, like, attacking the force when he's about to execute them. That conversation was so confusing. I was reading the official translation. I had no fucking idea what was going on. It was not a translation issue. I can tell you that it was this conversation doesn't make sense because Gil shows up and it's like, oh, man, he really wants to kill Gil. Yeah. And then it ends with him just being, I don't give a fuck. Go ahead. Fight the liches. I don't care. And it's like, well, what? <laughs> yeah. All right. They rush over just as the liches begin their assault and Gil sees his cool troll aunt. She gets killed almost immediately by the leader of the lich attack, who is possessing the body of one of Drecky's students and wields a hellfire relic. David, we, we just can't have cool things. You introduce this dope looking troll lady character and I'm thinking who has apples. I'm thinking, oh, this is cool. We got like a new cool character. Dead. Gone. Yeah. Dead. The moment Gil said, oh, my aunt is part of trolls. Like, oh, I want to meet her so bad. I hope she comes back. And then bam. She was so cool. She was so cool. She grows apples on herself because all of the trolls are like dryads for their part tree. She's this cool, short troll lady covered in tattoos, smoking like some kind of some kind of <laughs> leaf. She's smoking some kind of herb is all I'm saying. She's got like photographic memory. She has like the whole history. She is the living history of the troll people. She's so cool. Coolest character in the whole manga killed within a chapter. God, don't you hate to see it? Oh. So Santa's arm and legs are cut off, but a little troll girl sorry, gives her an apple from Auntie Troll's tree branch hair, and it heals her, giving her an arm and a leg with sick tattoos. Auntie Troll was the book of wisdom, being with photographic memory who can, who can speak all languages and retains history. Santa now has taken over her role. With her dying breath, Auntie Troll was able to read Gil's cool necklace and say that the relic is here. And just then, the necklace opens and a little starfling fuses into Gil's body, which means that he has completed the stage of Mario and is sent back to the room of all the portraits. <laughs> God, imagine that, or he just isekai's on the spot he just hops out of a painting he's like what the yeah. fuck <laughs> Same here with the oh it was mario that time i got reincarnated it's mario <laughs> oh god i'm waiting for that isekai popcorn digi 
The star thing gives Gil water powers, but because it's so cold, the water becomes ice. Gil uses his ice powers to drive off the Lich invasion, and they follow the Lich army back to their HQ, where they meet the Lich King, who has fully possessed Drekki's father and his army, and fights back. The last good World of Warcraft expansion. The Lich King flies over the human capital where he captures the king and lets his army run rampant. Gil makes it back and uses his axe and ice powers to defeat the Lich King for good, but now they have to close the gates of hell. Gil uses water relic, Santa uses her wind relic, and the earth relic is actually a combination of Greatest and Sliz's swords. The fire relic, however, is extremely dangerous to use, and the king is prepared to give his own life to use it, but then Drekki's body magically stands up without a head and uses the relic to close the gate permanently. Years pass, and the king dies of an illness, passing the throne onto his nephew, who is now known as Icehead Gill. Cue title drop. Yeah! Dun, dun, dun. God, what a fucking... All right, let's talk about the characters real quick. ZZ, what, what was your take on the main character, besides the fact that his design... I haven't seen anime hair like that in quite a while. I didn't think he looked that bad. I think this author had a real knack for character designs, but Gill ended up being the worst of the bunch. Definitely the lamest, I think. He, I didn't. I don't think I hated him as much as David seems to. Like, he's a weird cross between the Demon Slayer guy and Gon, kind of. The sheer level of Demon Slayer influence on this series, which we'll get into. I'm just reading your notes, and you wrote Gon Wannabe. <laughs> yeah, he is a Gon <laughs> Wannabe. And I feel he has one character trait that isn't generic, in that he refu- he hates eating by himself. Which they give a really quick explanation for right at the end. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny, actually, because they literally show something where he's in the forest and he's like, man, eating alone is the best. And then he gets attacked by like what an assassin. He didn't even have time to be scared. It's just assassin shows up. His dad saves him. I don't want to eat alone anymore. Again, literally the second it's relevant. (laughs) Yeah, this author was writing by the seat of his pants. But Jordan, do you mind telling us about the second character that actually matters in the series, Sana? So we're talking about Sana Ronnie. She wears like... God, can we talk about how like how that's like if you put in a Finnish name generator getting Sana Ronnie? (laughs) <laughs> literally your first name is sauna for, for those who are unfamiliar there's actually more sauna per capita than, or more sauna in finland than i think people or something crazy like that they are obsessed with saunas what is sauna you know sauna where like a hot where you go and it's hot it's like a steam room steam bath oh a sauna yeah oh because i've been pronouncing your name like yeah okay all right sauna D- this was a shitty pun david but <laughs> i'm really mad at you now honestly <laughs> I'm so mad. I, I've gotten completely distracted. You're welcome. But anyway, she wears the hat from Eco. She's was a part of this group that was like kind of forced to live in this. Uh, it's like a ghetto. Yeah. And one of the weird decrees is that they are not allowed to have any uh, pleasures. So like they're not allowed to read books. Yeah. So stupid. It's very dumb. And so she escapes and it's like, yeah, I can read and I can steal. I can steal things. That's all she does is steal shit. She's literally a goblin. Yeah, little thief. But she's got a magic bow, which is one of the relics. And it's one of those things where it's like, ah, she can fire it. Oh, no, the bow gives her anime coughing up blood disease. Relic of giving tuberculosis. Yeah, it's, it's every single anime. It's like, oh, man, this character is tired. How do we know? Uh, he's coughing up blood. Stamina system. He got hurt. Oh, he's coughing up blood. And it only happens once in the time they have it for the manga, too. It doesn't really seem relevant. No. But she she does get her arm and leg cut off and then become the new Book of Wisdom. And yeah, that, you know what? Good for her, I guess. That doesn't seem like that much fun, but I guess it's kind of cool. Yeah. The king wants to kill her and then seems to not give a shit. Yeah, they, they brought up, like, multiple times. He was like, okay, you can go, but I'm still gonna execute her. He's like, no, you can't, so just drag the scene on. Yeah, like, that scene sucked. <laughs> really? Oh, God. And then I'll talk about Greatest. So Greatest Frey, I can't believe his name, first name Greatest. Isn't that like a Kanye Lesterk or something? He looks like a woman, but he's not. He's pretty much like a Sanji womanizer, where he has no luck. I mean, he's kind of a fucking idiot. Yeah, absolutely. No, so to clarify, when he shows up, he's like, you guys don't know who I am. I am the great, great, greatest. And it's like I'm reading that and I'm waiting for him to say his name. And it took me a while to realize, oh, no, his name is greatest. And later on, they kept saying like, oh, it's great. And I was like, is that his name? Is that a nickname? Is Grace a nickname? Yeah. And he has this like arbitrary brother that's literally mentioned just to show up and be evil and (laughs) die again. 
His brother's name is Honest. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'll take Honest over Greatest. <laughs> I really feel like, you know, most of the time we have this uh, feeling that the mangaka found out three chapters before it ended, that like the series was ending. I feel like this guy knew like 10 chapters. Before. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he, as soon as he went to the troll forest, it was instantly in end game mode. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, what? <laughs> it seemed like it started wrapping up way too fast too early. Yeah. Why don't we use that, though, as a good jumping off point into getting to why it failed? Yeah. So, uh, continuing on that thought of issue with the series, the Digi, what is something you would say really stood out to you as an issue with this series? I mean, there's really not much chemistry. A lot of the characters are very flat and they don't bounce off each other in interesting ways. You know, they get like one quirk to add quote unquote depth, but it's really just often a phrase on repeat or something. Yeah, I, I guess I could bring this up now in that the author, this is his first manga and it's very apparent, yeah. in that he has zero concept of actually why these theories or concepts exist. He was like, oh, Demon Slayer has these really cool arbitrary backgrounds to make you feel bad or make you feel depthful. We're going to just show backgrounds that have nothing to do with anything going on. We don't do any diegetic backstory. We're just showing you a random story. Oh, he had a brother who died. Don't you feel really bad? He's not such a bad guy, except he is because it has no influence on his actions. Or, oh, characters are quirky in One Piece. Let's add that. That makes them seem depthful because I'm not going to write actually interesting characters. My issues with this manga are very similar, but I think they completely destroy everything, which is this guy is this is like the worst attempt at foreshadowing I've ever seen. Not in the sense where it's like blatant, but in the sense that he never lets anything build up to pay off. He tells you everything the second it's relevant. The right. worst example of this is actually in chapter two. We didn't even mention it because it's completely fucking irrelevant. Get Gil meets this guy who's like, damn, my fiance disappeared. And then people said that she was guiding people into the forest. And then uh, her little sister shows up and she's like, you got to help me. You know, this thing keeps happening, you know, and it's like, oh, man, I guess your sister might be possessed by a lich immediately. Second page. Next page. Oh, man, it's the girl. She's possessed by a lich. Here she is. She shows up. And it's like, well, dude, hold on. I don't really care yet. Can you like yeah. wait till I get a shit before you do this and the second biggest issue is on the flip side this guy is so bad at knowing what to give emphasis to i feel like when um you know sana eats the apple and grows her arms like and grows her arm and like it just yeah. happens the next panel and it's like dude maybe that's the time to have like this moment where we see in sana's head and she's like all this knowledge is coming into my head wow my arm and my leg are growing whoa and no no it's just next panel there you go she's done and this repeatedly happens. Yeah, it's just like they randomly just have flashbacks show up and there's absolutely nothing that le led to the flash up just starting. Yeah, it's just so on the fucking nose. There's no fucking subtlety here. It knocks you in the fucking face with everything. Like when Gil has that flashback where he's literally like, man, I love eating alone. Like, <laughs> Can you give us some kind of subtlety, man? You got to have him just say that right out. Like we see Gil and standing behind him is this weird fucked up beast. And then later that chapter, a guy's like, man, this assassin, you know, the king told him to kill you many times and he would try and assassinate fascinate you and then it showed the same image of that guy in the same exact pose as that fucked up beast looking exactly like him about to strike in the same time and it's like oh well i i guess i know what that beast was now thanks for not letting it build or anything i guess i just know yeah also one thing as we talked about is there's both no connection tissue in the writing but also the paneling is really bad this is an issue again where he knows the theory and he knows that it's okay to skip panels sometimes but he doesn't know why people skip panels sometimes so he just has what seems like hard cuts in the same scene rather than being like like he'll just have an axe in his hand i did notice that the awkward jumps seemed to they uh were less frequent as the series went on oh yeah so like this guy was improving but it was very clear starting out that there were a lot of issues like that first chapter has a lot of really quirky art that's kind of endearing in how bad it is yeah, well, that just had things where he forgot to draw things like eyes on people's faces. I wouldn't be surprised if he did the setting because all of the snow meant he didn't actually have to really draw backgrounds, which is a genius move. But I think that was part of it. It's just look at how lazy the backgrounds are because he can get away with it being snow. Oh, speaking of backgrounds, there's like no notable locales yeah. aside from the troll forest, which has giant hands, which really don't come up more than a couple of pages. Oh, yeah, they didn't really explain the mountain hands. And then the mountain hands get destroyed and there's like no repercussions of these living mountains being destroyed. 
This guy has no idea how to prioritize what to tell you. Like, we noticed it in chapter one where it's like, wait, how did Gil get that axe? And it's like in this little panel, he takes the axe from Mela. And it's like, well, dude, you should have shown that a little bit more, like kind of make it more clear. Because the first time I read, it, I was like, how did this happen? Like, when did that happen? Speaking of her, she is also like a pretty bad person, but the series really tries to make her seem good. Like she is ex actively extorting the population. Like they talk about taxes, but they don't actually say what she's using that money for that actually helps society. So she just seems like she's hoarding money from them. And they redeem her by having her pull the uh, shanks. Oh, take my arm instead of the main character. And then they do the take my arm instead of the main character again with the, the, Santa. We don't even see Sana's arm get sliced off. We just see her and her arm is sliced off. Did you notice that, like, all the liches had these, like, ranged weapons, like spears and whips and stuff? Yeah. So you could always draw, like, these big uh, scenes of them just swinging wildly with the big slash marks. It seems like the liches have to stab somebody in the stomach in order to take them over. <laughs> I did. They didn't really understand the rules to the liches. And it's also like, if you have to burn them, why are people like not actively like having like flammable liquid with them? Because you could just like Molotov cocktail the liches. I think they were saying it had to specifically be Hellfire. They say Hellfire, but Gil's not getting Hellfire. Yeah. Where are they getting that from? Where are they getting this magical fire from? Because they just have it on the island that Gil lives on. They're getting it from hell, David. It's, it's implied they just have fire with them. Why are they not actively weaponizing the one weapon that can permanently kill the legend? Oh, uh, which one? The Hellfire. But I, again, you could make a Hellfire Molotov cocktail. I have no idea what that even was. Like, I don't know if they even ever had Hellfire. I don't know if they ever permanently killed a lich in this series. They did in the first chapter. They, they cremated the liches. I was honestly like, where it could have gone is like, oh, are we going to explore? Is there something left over of the lich because they're not using the right Hellfire? Yeah, and then there's also, there's like that huge like retaining memory component and personality yeah. fight, and it never fucking matters, and every lich is unquestionably evil. And that seems like that would have been an easy way to have made some morally gray liches, where you're like, oh, their main memory is spilling out, so it's like hard for them to maintain being a piece of shit. One of the best scenes is when they're burning the girl's sister who's a lich and the memories are mixing, but like what makes Deadites in the Evil Dead series so endearing as monsters is the fact that their main weakness is they stop to psychologically torture people with the memories they stole from whoever they're possessing. Yeah. Oh, it's so creepy in Evil Dead 2 where like she looks over and sees just like just her grandmother singing at her. Those movies are so good. Now that we're talking about something actually, like why don't we talk about what it did well? Yeah. I have to say that I'm honestly disappointed the series isn't good because this is such a cool setting, like yeah. dealing with liches and Nordic inspiration is very rare in a Shonen Jump series. Honestly, I kept being like, man, I really want to like this series because this is this has a good background and setting to have made a really interesting story. And it definitely gets points for that. I also think that the series started to get better in the fight scenes because this guy can sometimes draw a really cool action moment. Yeah, he's great at trying people spin. <laughs> oh my god, everybody spun, yeah. It's a Rocky again. Seven was the most. You could destroy anything with seven spin. Well, I'm gonna spin eight. Yeah, and then Gil spins eight times. <laughs> and it's like, damn, that's one more than seven. Wait a second, let me get my calculator out for that. Yeah, man, one of the things, I know we're in what it did well, but like, I gotta say, every time he increases uh, the amount of times he spins, he changes it to a more impressive animal he kills, like caribou hunting, wolf hunting, and then it goes to orca hunting, whale hunting, and then tiger hunting, and I feel like... And dragon hunting after that. Yeah, but, but I feel like hunting a tiger with an axe is less impressive than hunting a whale with an axe. Also, where would you see a tiger? He lives in the Nordic country. I don't know. Where would he see a dragon? Well, I guess he makes ice dragons. But anyway. Well, there's, I mean, their fictional creatures are real in this setting. Yeah. There were, for the record, there are, there's actually an axe named after a Nordic dragon. Where would he see an orca? I don't think they're around that area. Well, he lives on an island. Yeah. You could okay. probably, probably find an orca somewhere. I, I don't think that's an issue, Jordan. Get out of here. Some kind of whale. You know what? That's something the series did well, then. I take it back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, that which is the right section to say that. No, I think the art was sometimes really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I also think the liches as a mechanic are interesting. There's definitely a lot of space they didn't use, but the whole, like, take over a body and, like, have to deal with it. I actually thought it was a cool call that there isn't a way to fix the lich possession. Yeah. So it means you always are going to have to do the hard thing, which is to permanently kill them. Yeah, you said that something about the liches stabbing someone in the chest to possess them. I read it as the liches had to kill the person. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure they just have to be dead. They're taking over their body. Yeah, but everyone except for Drekki specifically had a sword stabbed through them. I'm just like, well, that th I guess this is a recurring thing. Yep, I guess I'll just die now. Do you guys have any more positives? I feel like I know this section will pro is probably not very long. You know, I like this story, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's really hard to pick stuff out that really shined. Yeah, now that we're just spinning some ideas, let's get into where it could have gone. So, Jordan, what, what's the first thing? Because I think as we talked about, this has some good bones. Ah, ha, ha. Uh, that's a little lich pun that I think really could have been worked on. So what are what, what are some things you would have tweaked about this? Why wasn't the axe the relic? <laughs> So here's the problem. What happens if he has a magical ice generating axe? What's a major piece of content that has a frost axe that's magical? Yeah, I know, David, God of War, but it's like... Oh, I was thinking the Goonies. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't think God of War has, like, a fucking monopoly on that. Yeah, it would have been familiar. It's, it would have been similar. It's like, oh, no, a manga has a similarity to an American... God of War Ragnarok came out, like, maybe five months before this manga started. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, oh no, a Japanese property ripped off an American property. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Fine. I'll, I'll tell you somewhere it could have gone. One of the early chapters, I think it was Andy what's her name said something like, oh, maybe the liches are just a cover story. I mean, it turns out Drecky is a cover story for the liches, but like the possibility that liches were, you know, using a myth to their advantage and maybe there were real liches out there. That was actually a pretty cool thought. Yeah, but like, I also feel like they should have introduced the ice powers in chapter one. So it could be like, look, like Gil is like really special, like in addition to just being good at an axe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the relic just translating. The thing is here and just here being the only part they couldn't translate was just really dumb. <laughs> that was so stupid because like, obviously, this is the relic. No shit. Come on, guys. The issue I really have with Gil's relic is that everybody else has a weapon and then his is just something that goes inside of his chest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you think this author really was like, man, I want to have something with a frost axe and then God of War Ragnarok came out? Like, I Fuck. genuinely <laughs> think that he intentionally was trying to avoid comparisons with God of War by doing that because it's such a low. It's so obvious short. I genuinely think that that was why he didn't do it. Give him a different weapon then. <laughs> I don't know, or change it so that everybody has something that gives them fire powers or something. Did you notice that there are like two Hellfire relics in the series? Also, why was water affected by the cold, but not the fire? I don't know. Like, um, because it's magical. It's magical fire, but not magical water. Right? Yeah. I think the whole lich element, like, as I mentioned before, you could have made the liches much more sympathetic. Imagine if there was a lich that, like, had just taken over, like, a body that died of natural causes, and he was, like, kind of like an ally lich, and, like, show, like, how there is a way you can work with the liches, because it's not like pe people die of natural causes. There are hosts that they could have. Yeah, or you could have, you know, the memories mixing actually affect the lich's personality. It just was, but they were all unquestionably evil at all times. It's like the orcs from Lord of the Rings, you know? Yeah. When you make a race of creatures unquestionably, irredeemably evil, you create a situation where the most moral thing you can do is commit genocide. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> an issue of uh, d and 5th Ed had to change it, so now there's not, like, forced alignments based on your race anymore, because that had those issues. And That has really bad uh, implications. <laughs> yeah, it has really bad implications to say orcs are always evil. So they took that out as an element, which was probably a good call. Yeah. Yeah. Also, imagine if everyone just had an axe and it was like, what was it, Zahn, where everyone had a sword? The axe <laughs> world. And you see like little kids with their first axe and stuff. I do appreciate when a protagonist doesn't just have a sword, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, I think if you wanted low hanging fruit, just make this Nordic hunter hunter and just rip that off. And it would have, I think having a really cool background in designs could have carried it a lot longer than this idea. You know, we say that, but we saw Metallica Metaluka. We know what happens when something rips something, rips Hunter Hunter off too closely. Yeah. And that also had good ideas. Did it? Yeah, well, the different metal power I, was definitely the fundamental of something that could have been a cool power system. Potentially. Both those series had at least not terrible ideas. They were just terribly executed. More like executed. Hey. Horrible. Oh, I'm so fucking good. Horrible. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, ZZ, is there anything else you think you'd change about this? I think the King's Bard or Musician guy who was giving advice was, like, planned to be the real villain behind the throne or something. Oh, yeah. That's clearly a plot thread that got wrapped up, and maybe his music instrument was one of the relics, but they just kill him in second to last chapter with no fanfare. Yeah, they tried to, like, redeem the king who was like, fuck the king. <laughs> what, a, what an asshole. 
King has genocided an entire race of people. But yeah. I mean, the series did establish that there are races of people that are always evil. So he may not have been wrong to have done so. We totally forgot to mention in one panel, it's mentioned, oh, yeah, the uh, gates of hell were opened by some Rami person who the king was persecuting. It was mad about it. And it's like, well, I guess that makes the king feel more justified then. What the fuck? And Drecky was supposed to have worked with the Rani and we didn't ever really got follow up on that. Did they explain how she got a magical bow? No, no. Okay, just making sure I didn't miss that. Also, can we talk about how I feel like every series that is based on the four elements? There's one thing the Norse love, it's Greek classical elements. Yeah, totally love the use of Greek classical elements in a Nordic series. It's just such a low-hanging fruit that I instantly think a series is going to be shittier if they are like, we're going to bring in the four elements. They need heart. I would have been fine if they just didn't have them as a set, you know? Yeah, because like they didn't even talk about like Aesir and stuff like that, which actually comes from Nordic culture, so it's like so disappointing. You may as well just bring in the Chinese elements where they have like a fifth one. <laughs> Metal and wood are the two. Yeah. Oh, and they kept mentioning, oh, the giant, the serpent, and the wolf. Like, you're naming everything else from Norse. Why not these guys? Oh, you know what? They also said, oh, in the last Ragnarok, such and such. I was like, there's been multiple Ragnaroks? Yeah. That's cool as hell. Is this post-apocalypse? There's been the Thor Ragnarok and the God of War Ragnarok before this. <laughs> I want to know more about this setting now because of those Ragnaroks. Santa mentioned. I feel like the uh, Nordic influence was primarily aesthetic. Why don't we actually dive into miscellaneous thoughts and then I can talk about Maxi Beat goes into detail about how Nordic theming was used in the series. Sound good? Yeah. I'll read them off and then we can say what our other miscellaneous thoughts were. So they said, um, just take it from the top, Viking helmets did not have horns. The author admits he knows that, but he just thought it looked cool. That's fair. Yeah. Drucky's group is called the Nidhogg, which is after the dragon that gnaws on the roots of the world tree. So see, there you go. That's an example of a dragon in Nordic mythology. Yeah. Drucky also just means dragon. So it's just, there were a lot of hidden dragons in this. Imagine, <laughs> imagine those dragons. Dame Royal Antlers are named for one of the deer that eats along the branches of the world tree. The Hellsvig Royal Wings are named for the eagle who sits at heaven's end, the originator of wind. The Ratsoski, which is a Ratatoski, the Ratatoski, Ratatosker, David, that's a character in God of War. R Ratatoski is when he uh, gets on Odin's head and pulls out his hair to control him. Yeah, <laughs> that's how Ragnarok goes off. Ratatosker. The royal fangs are named after the squirrel who runs up and down the world tree, sending messages between the eagle and the Nidhogg. Apparently, he just like likes to start shit. So he's like just constantly upsetting the two of them on purpose to be an asshole. Yeah, that was in Ragnarok. That was like true to his character to be like that. Yeah. Gil's name is just Old Norse for the river or ravine. Sol is the sun, though Tucker actually thinks it may be more related to the word soul, not soul, because of just how it said it's supposed to be pronounced. Maybe it's a, it's a double meaning, David. It could be. And that makes me, uh, uh, man, remember that Hideo Kojima game? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. I played Baktai. King On's name seems to just come from the Icelandic word for duck, the action, not the bird. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fear of eating alone is called solo manga phobia. Probably manjara phobia, but yeah. No, it's definitely manga. It's gotta be. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I apologize. Plus, really, it's the fear of reading bad manga. Uh... The Rani were a real West Slavic tribe. They were around roughly the 9th century up to the 12th century, at which point they were defeated by the King of Norway and the island of Rugen. They occupied was subject to Christian conversion, eventually becoming a part of Germany. The relic Glepnir is named after an impossible to break chain that held the wolf Fenrir, made of the sound of a cat's footfall, beard of women, the roots of mountains, the sinews of bear, the breath of fish, and the spittle of birds. So one of those you actually can acquire. <laughs> it in the troll is named for the Norse god of fertility, who famously produced immortality ranting apples. He done was the name of the cool troll ant, by the way. Yeah. Maxby also questions, do they even acknowledge that Tharfur is a Rainy or that Orden's surname is Sol? Yeah, what the fuck was that? No, they never do. One of the leaders of like the king's uh, guards shows up and his name is Orden's Sol. And I'm like, is that his uncle? Like, wh who is this? And they just don't mention it. Yeah, finishing up. They said, Munin the Crow Man is, of course, named for one of Odin's two crows, Hugin and Munin. Slepnir is Odin's eight-legged horse, which I believe shows up, but I think he only drew six legs on it. <laughs> there were a couple that were pretty well hidden. I counted. Oh, okay. And <laughs> Maxime says it's one of our Patreon milestones. One of us will get Gil's haircut. So sure, if we can get $10,000 a month, we'll get that haircut. <laughs> 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 all right, so that's all Max Beast Wonderful Thoughts, though. What, did you two have any miscellaneous thoughts as well? Uh, I feel like I got it all out. Just like I said earlier, this author improved across the work, and it was really nice to see. Yeah. Admirable first attempt. Not great, but, you know, admirable. Is that your six-word summary? No. 
I am also mad, though, that none of the actual Nordic gods show up. Yeah. And, uh, speaking on the topic, it makes some jokes about six-word summaries. Let's get into that with our final verdicts. Starting with some six-word summaries from the community. From Tucker, we have Shiny Vike Paint, Cheap Shown Interior. Maxi B, So No Ice Head, Breaks Phone, <laughs> Skateboard. God, what a fucking great reference to that vine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Animal Crossing version of that. <laughs> I don't know that one. Oh, you'll have to watch it. Chicken Warlord said, Lackluster Lich Encounter leaves audiences cold. Also, a Demi Lich never shows up. I thought that was going to be the big bad of the series. Great technical death metal band, Demi Lich. Anyway. There you go. Diego says, Not a Demon Slayer from the North. Glormax says, Capricious Child Challenges Kalus Caregiver's Conviction. Calloused. Isekai, close enough. I don't care. No, I just can't. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jordan. Isekai says, cold chalk chops chilled corpses chaotically. Kermit the Grob says, atrocious action axes and vicious adventure account. Jordan is like, how did he get that in one go? Nah. Captain Clueless said, dedicated to you, gooder, defiantly defeats devilish demons or interesting concept, but it's poorly executed. Hey! hey! Lord Anubis says, it was axing for the axe. Hey! Luffy says, again, needs more dummy mommy. Auntie. Auntie or Mella, you know, fucking whatever. Maxi B has another one that says over parentheses. Alliteration awkwardly alters any attempt at organization. <laughs> Mario says Gil's unimpressive narrative does axe material. Red Blade says, oh, God, not again, which maybe was a response to the to bullshit. So I don't think that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's four words. <laughs> Real has one that I was going to use, but they said, let me ask you a question. <laughs> oh God, of course you were going to use that, David. Yeah, Spike says, interesting idea spun into generic acts. Super Dave says, cooler heads did not prevail here. Hey. <laughs> this is a great episode for six word summaries. The Laughing Fool, frozen potential melts over critical fires. The Yeti, careful with that axe. Gil Soul, insert Roger Waters screeching noises. Uh, Dylan, That's uh, the basis for Pink Floyd, David. Yeah, I don't watch, I don't watch movies. I can't find any versions of it that's isolated from music, so you'll have to do with my best interpretation. <laughs> All right, T. Wolfwood says battling bogus buffoons, baffles, bewildered, bibliophile, and nobody beats Gil with the axe. <laughs> I like Watchtowers. Watchtower wrote, boy, 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 <laughs> which then included a super cut of every time the word boy <laughs> said God of War. <laughs> Fun fact, actually, for a while in the script, they hadn't named his son Atreus, and they just had him say boy's placeholder, and then they just kept some of those takes because they thought it Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Dackerson wrote a haiku who said Scandinavian settling slicing satanic scary sorcerers. Dylan says, It's a trick. Get an axe. Red Blade, broken record baby, don't stop gloating. Resident Warhammer nerd, axing glitches is our specialty, Chancellor. Spike, might I ask you a question? So if that's two, sorry, Spike, you'll be forbidden from asking. But that was Axe Body Spray, because it was in all caps. Yes, yes. And then, um, <laughs> Digi, what was yours? What you got there? An axe! No! <laughs> God, all right. Uh, how about you, Jordan? Oh, one of the best vines ever. Uh, Earth, fire, wind, water, no heart. <laughs> oh, that's good. That did happen in an episode once. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was, learn the why to theory, please. Nice. I know, mine wasn't a silly joke, that was just a statement that the offer... So strange from you! I know, I know, I just, I, I thought of it on the plane, so maybe I was really out of it. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, uh, what level of flop is this? To me, this was a pretty low level, not a flop. Like, I enjoyed it most of the way through, there's a lot of room for improvement, though. Okay. So you're saying not a flop, interesting. Yeah, I, I liked it, to be honest. I thought this was a flop, not certified, just kind of mid. It's a, t it's a two spin. Yeah. So ZZ Digital, is this better or worse than Chainsaw Man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's absolutely better because he's got axes and chainsaws. Chainsaws are so dumb, you know? Denji uses an axe in part one. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Never mind. Screw me. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Chainsaw Man wins forever. Yeah. yeah. I'm also going to say this is a flop. My recommendation, I don't know. I just felt like recommending Frog Detective because <laughs> I just remembered how Gil just likes to make like really stupid observations that don't really contribute anything. Just like how in Frog Detective and yeah, yeah, Frog Detective is just a really fun 40 minute that just puts a smile in your pocket the whole time. And it's just a it's just a really silly game. Or Frog Fractions. Play that, too. One of the best games of all time. Is that your recommendation? My recommendation is uh, Adventure Time because that makes sense. There's a lich, and you get the greatest four elements of all time, which are fire, ice, candy, and slime. <laughs> the big four. Big four elements. That's a big four elements I can get behind. None of the Creek stuff. I'm done with it. Yeah. 
I'm so done with the classical almonds. All right. I, I like how someone said it's like there are four different spices that tune to the almonds. It's it's like mint, cinnamon, spice, and I forget what the fourth one is. Chemical X. Chemical <laughs> X. Yeah. You know what, though? I'm sick. Instead of the Greek uh, elements, they should do the humors more, which are, I believe, um, phlegm, sanguine, bile. Right. Just like two biles. Yeah, yellow bile and black bile, which, as we all know, are piss and shit. Yeah. And yeah, that's we had, we talked about making a longer where it was based on the five tastes, which I thought would have been cool. Oh, yeah. So it'd be like sweet, sour, umame and stuff. I think that would have been a cool basis for the elements. Yeah, I've kicked around basically like a fighting food on tabletop idea. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'd be fun. All right, but we're, let's get into wrap ups already. This is also, by the way, not the worst series we've ever read. Not even close. No. So, ZZ, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. This was a ton of fun. Can you tell the audience about all of the amazing things you do? Primary place you can find me is on your guys' Discord server. Yeah! Yeah! 600 people yeah. strong! <laughs> if you want to listen to me do stuff, I am a player on the d and Weeb Network, which is on Spotify, but only on the Avenir Academy and the 13 Yokai arcs. I'm really proud of what we're doing with the Avenir Academy, so definitely check that one out. I also run a podcast called Interstitial Heart to Mind Lair, which is a Kingdom Hearts-inspired podcast. I was going to say, you mentioned interstitial. I was like, wasn't that the Kingdom Hearts D&D? Yeah, by your former guest, Riley Hopkins. Yeah. The creator of the Riley Method. <laughs> <laughs> the Riley Method, yeah. So, you know, is what is it? Read one of every, read every fourth chapter of a series. Yeah. And miss nothing because. God, oh, beachy. Oh, but that is so cool. Interstitial is great. I remember I played Punish Hank. <laughs> yeah. Where I was a bad and Hank and I photoshopped him to have all of the Punish Snake stuff on his face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Heart to Mind Layers currently on a, uh, I'll get to it when I get to an update schedule, similar to a podcast that Jordan runs. Yeah. Aww. Mission Ignition. What's that? No, it's not your time to talk about it yet. Get fucked, uh, buddy. Fuck Anyways. Uh, uh, yeah. But it's time now to say, Jordan, thank you for making the opening and ending me being your great co-host and helping with editing. Thank you so much, David, for the same. I also want to say props to Merlot for the awesome cover. This was a great one. It was very obvious what we had to parody. Yep. You can find her online at Lyle Murr and Nigel for being our generous art benefactor. Thanks to Dylan for assistance with editing. Find his podcast, Anime at Context, at AnimeContext.com. Thanks to Tucker and Maxi B for assistance with pronunciation, translation, other miscellaneous research. Find us on Twitter at Shonen Flopcast, Tumblr, Shonen Flop, and our website, ShonenFlop.com. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, wherever else you get your podcasts. Come join the Shonen Flop Discord. I think it's pretty good. What, do, what would you say, Digi? How would you rate it out of? How many spins out of seven spins would you give it? Uh, the Discord community, I'd give it on average an eight spin. Nice. I thought you were going to say that. I was worried you weren't going to say uh, that. I'm like, come on, man. He's teeing me up. Like, it's OK. Yeah, it's open to everyone. You don't have to be a patron. Come hang out with us. Just talk about whatever's on your mind. And even join the podcast and help us keep going. Consider subscribing to our Patreon. Wouldn't be able to keep the show running without their support. Get a ton of awesome perks. Jordan, what did we drop this month for our wonderful patrons? We read the pilots of a bunch of the series that we covered in the past. Yes. Some of them are extremely similar. Some of them are totally different. Yes. And you can also be listening to the Warm Body, listening to us live right now, or helping us pick what series we cover. And I'm also going to read off our wonderful patrons, starting with our Dolphin Dad tiers. We have Glormac, Papa Sean, Break My Back Like a Glow Stick, Woo Woo, and Rachel, my wonderful no fiance no more. She's my wife. She got me a pack of magic cards, which had a $40 magic card I needed for my deck. Fuck yeah. So very impressive how she managed to pull that off. Wife magic. Yes, she's got, she's a magical waifu. Moving on down to the ravioli tier where you get weekly photos of my goblin dog who got a pair of pajamas for Hanukkah. We have Chris, Eva, Karate Chopsticks, Sean, you sound like you need a blowjob, wink, wink, question mark. Jesus Christ. And Trevor Schechner. Moving on down to the king of the forest, we have 090Z. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Bandit Stoof. My girlfriend. Chad Mason, Jacob Andrew Galloway, Kirby Munt, Marty, Max Baker, Sarah Hydra, who upgraded as a wedding gift for me, which was really nice, and T. Wolfwood. Thank you all so much, along with our Galactic Ball Federation officers and our Beast Children. Yes, thank you. I love you all very much. Check out Mission Ignition, which is the uh, podcast that ZZ Digital referenced. We're trying to get yeah. another episode going. Jordan is the second person I've ever met who remembers and saw vampires on TV. Oh, we've had a few guests that know about it. Uh, who's the other one? Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we had some guests who was like, oh, yeah, vampires. I used to watch that. That was how I found your uh, Shonen Flop. I heard an ad for Mission Ignition. I was like, holy shit, someone else knows about their show. And then mm -hmm. they led me to Shonen Flop. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
How did you find an ad about Mission Ignition? I'm just really I don't curious. Know. It was some podcast with the like Orange Grove guys. I swear I've talked to you about this before somewhere. They mentioned it? Oh, cool. Well, that's awesome. So why don't we wrap things up and go to sign offs? Thanks so much for joining us. Tune in next Monday as we are doing the floppies. The floppies! floppies. This has been David. This has been Jordan. And this has been ZC Digital. And you've been listening to Shun the Flop. Keep on flopping, flopper. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye.